Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> Do, I don't have a Bible in my house. I just realized, look at our bookcases here. I don't think Shell and I own a Bible. Nor do we have a copy of the Constitution in our house. Any suggestions from the audience as to where I could get a Bible, gold gilded pages would be preferred, that also comes with the Constitution. Maybe a leather uh, cover that's got uh, the, U the United States American flag embossed onto it. My budget's $60. I'm willing to pay for tax and shipping on top of my $60. But I can't go over $60. Any suggestions? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay, I know I'm late to the party with this one. I've had other things I wanted to read on. And, you know, going after Donald Trump and Bibles is really low-hanging fruit. But sometimes... Spirit wants you to kick the low-hanging fruit right between the legs. And besides, it's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter Sunday. Happy Zombie Jesus Day for those who don't celebrate Easter Sunday. Happy March 31st for everybody else. Um, it just seems appropriate that, you know, let's go visit Donald. Let's go visit him hawking Bibles on Easter Sunday. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And that in that awful interview where he was saying the Bible's his favorite book and the interviewer knows he's lying through his teeth and just says, oh, well, really, what's your favorite passage? And then Trump's like, oh, well, it's a very personal thing. I wouldn't want to share that with anybody, you know. <laughs> Are you an Old Testament or New Testament guy? Um, both, you know. I'll bet you if you said, how many, how many apostles are there? Name name your favorite name your favorite of of the of the apostles. Name your favorite one. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Well, just name one of them. But you can't name one of them. But you can't name how many books are in there. You know, it's just the guy, he's such a shyster. How do I? Obviously, some of his evangelical folks they they know he's lying to them. They just know he is. They just don't care. God cares, I think. Um, let give me the energy around Trump and his Bibles. This, oh God, the irony of it all. <laughs> Buy a Bible from the devil. The devil of the Amway sells in himself. Trump, Bibles, energy, happy Easter, go. Queen of Wands. Oh, God, where do you even begin with this one? Um, Taking energy. Oh, you know what this is? <laughs> I think Letitia James is under his skin. He has got, he's got to raise money and he's got to raise money any way he can. Now, funnily enough, first digression, I'm barely two sentences into the reading. One of the backgrounds of this, uh, uh, you know, God bless the USA Bible was that when it first came out, it was a tribute to 9-11. Okay. But so it's, you know, it's been out for like 14 years or something like that. But it was something to to buy, to celebrate uh, and remember 9-11 by. Um, Trump only recently started licensing his name and the price went up 10 bucks once Trump started doing that. So you can figure out how much per Bible is going to Trump. Probably about 10 bucks. Um, however, the uh, as the, the site says, is that um, the Bible is not... Uh, Let's see, where, where is it? It's not political. It has nothing to do with any political campaign. God bless the USA Bible is not owned, managed, or controlled by Donald J. Trump. The Trump, organiza the Trump Organization, CIC Ventures, LLC, or any other principals or affiliates. Um, it licenses Trump's name or likeness. Now, CIC Ventures, LLC is a company that Trump reported on his fiscal uh, disclosure. So basically, Trump has a shell company that licensed his image to this Bible selling company for probably to the tune of $10 for every Bible that you sell. But the money goes right to Donald Trump. <laughs> Don't think it's anything other than that. But I think it's because Letitia James has a big um, judgment out on him. So he's relegated to $5 uh, 
ads on YouTube, which often show up before my uh, videos, asking you for five bucks, or in this case, hawking Bibles, gold sneakers, anything to earn money. He's got to get, basically, he's got to grift while the grifting is good. He is running out of time to grift. He's got until about November to get the grifting done. Underneath it all is the emperor. Um, <laughs> God himself looking at Jesus, <laughs> looking at Jesus saying, why did we put him down on that planet again? <laughs> Can you believe he's selling Bibles? <laughs> No, I think this is uh, this is the law. This is the United States, the government. The end of days is coming for Donald Trump. He's meeting the authority, whether it's God he's going to meet or the the U.S. J Justice Department or Joe Biden or something. The emperor is underneath all of this, and he is scrambling to um, to to make as much money as he can. Uh, ones are about action. I'll see if, if, if Trump fleeing the country shows up on any of this. I'm, I will keep an eye out for like the three of wands or four of wands or something to throw in there. In the past is the queen of pentacles. This man didn't meet a dollar he didn't fall in love with. <laughs> no, I'm saying the Trump gold dollar bills, Trump coins, Trump stakes, Trump water. Uh, he, just always trying to figure out ways to make money. But the problem is Donald Trump has always had things handed to him. And so he doesn't have that full appreciation of money. He thinks he does, but he hemorrhages cash because all his money is tied to his ego. And it's a real simple, now if you think about it, it's, it's really simple if you think about it that way, um, because he markets his name. Donald Trump is the marketing behind it. His face, his name, his reputation. So that's why he builds himself up as this incredibly successful person because you can't market yourself, brand yourself as a success if you're a failure. So you have to get on, make up stuff to make it onto the Forbes uh, Fortune 400 list and things along those lines. His dad gave him all this money to start out with. So he had a million dollars by the time he was five years old because his dad uh, hid a bunch of money with him. He's hemorrhaged cash wherever he's gone. But he also worships it too because without cash, he's nothing. So his net worth and his self-worth run parallel. <laughs> As I said, and here come all the coins. Current situation, here's his net worth. He's portrayed himself as a successful person. Look at all these female cards here, too. <laughs> um, a very successful person, very wealthy, uh, has all the things, you know, planes, golf courses, <laughs> so on and so on. But it's all an illusion. And hawking the Bibles here, <laughs> here's God not being real happy with him hawking his Bibles, is just another way of self-enrichment. Now, Salesmen are going to sell. That's just what they do. Um, and they might overrepresent things. But he moves beyond salesmen. He moves to con man. Because he doesn't... He, he tricks people. He, he tells them things that are valuable when they're really not. And he doesn't appreciate all the, the nice trappings he has. Because it's always been given to him. Or he's taken it from people. He doesn't pay his subcontractors. He doesn't pay his lawyers. He doesn't pay people. So you don't appreciate what you have because you just stiff people whenever you can. He's learning a very valuable lesson, though, about money and the lack of money, about fool's gold here. His behaviors, his actions that he's taken to raise money have backfired on him. Everything he touches dies is what they uh, say. Now, I'll give you an example of the, of the opposite. Uh, not many of you would probably follow rock and roll, but Sammy Hagar is a rock and roll star from his days with uh, fronting Montrose to the Sammy Hagar band 
to singing with uh, Van Halen and, you know, uh, Chicken Foot and all the solo careers that he's done. But Sammy Hagar turns anything he touches to gold. It is the most amazing thing. His musical groups have all been successful. And he's had uh, Cabo Wabo, which was a, a tequila, I believe, uh, business, which he sold for like $80 million. And he's had another business that he uh, that he put together that is also, you know, netted him millions of dollars. Just everything he's around succeeds. He is the antithesis of Donald Trump in that regard. And Sammy Hagar strikes me as somebody who really appreciates what he has. He appreciates the people around him. And he just seems like a really good guy. And it's just the exact opposite of this. Uh, where Sammy Hagar would, you know, he looks like, what am I going to do? I'm, uh, no, I'm going to make money. I appreciate it. I've been successful in everything I do. I look at opportunities and I could be really successful with them. And this um, archway is, the, is repetition. Learn your lesson and you don't have to repeat it. But Sammy Hagar, he repeats making money. He's just really good at it. Trump is the opposite. Everything he touches fails. How many bankruptcies? Six bankruptcies? He's not allowed to do a charity anymore because he was ripping off his charity? Mm. Donald's got to learn a lesson about money and, you know, trying to stiff people. Uh, he's given so many, think about it this way. He's been given so many opportunities, so much money, and he doesn't learn his lesson. It's just so ego-based with him. Can you believe it? Another coin card. Page of Pentacles. There's a messaging about money and its worth. It can be worth a lot. It's money is like energy. Uh, it, it flows. You can you can have a lot, and you can have a little. You can have a little money and be wealthy, because you can and you can live a very wealthy life with just a little bit of money. You know, because life is what you make it, and what you, it's what you appreciate. And you could be have all the money in the world and be poor, uh, because you just don't you don't you don't understand money. Um, He's Donald Trump is certainly not a hoarder. <laughs> if he was a hoarder, he'd have a ton of cash, but he's not. Um, it's funny because for Trump, the money just he, he he spends it all and he leverages himself. He spends it faster than he can take it in. He's never learned that balance uh, that he needs, that balance and flow. And he keeps being given opportunities to learn that balance and flow. He can't do it. He just absolutely has failed this lifetime with it. I told you I was going to watch for that Four of Wands card. Um, you know, and now he's just recently gotten this big uh, um, uh, Trump media group just sold to a SPAC. Uh, and he stands to make billions of dollars off of it. It's another financial opportunity that's uh that's come his way but you watch donald trump will figure out a way to lose that money outcome is the four of wands i told you i was watching for that this would be a card of donald trump leaving whether he's going up to the pearly gates or he's leaving the country donald trump is now starting to contemplate his leaving the country and it's not because of the um Huh. It could be. I was about to say, it's not because of the civil trial judgment, but it could be. He's got those, um, he's got all that money coming in. You have to be worried about them freezing your bank accounts. But, you know, the Four of Wands is uh, uh, the wedding card. You know, being welcomed in or being kicked out type of thing. Um, so that four of wands could be he's be he's going to be kicked out of the billionaires club, <laughs> or he could be welcome welcome back to the billionaires club one more time with your uh, your sale of uh, the Donald Trump media group. True social. It could also be that if he can get his money and flee to avoid uh, consequences. He might do that too. Susan Lynn would have you believe that he might be visiting the big McDonald's in the sky by June. We will see. Okay, so that's 
<laughs> Trump in his Bible, he's in uh, the four wands. You could just be here's another opportunity for him to uh, for him to grift. How is Trump's finances going to look by the end of the year? Uh, one of the things I was watching a TikTok on with regards to the true social social purchase is that one of the things about his um, his shares being vested to him is he can't just dump them all in the market. There's a formula for it. It's something like uh, he could trade up to the amount of shares that are on like a rolling 30 day or rolling 90 day average. So let's say on the stock market, about a million shares trade a day. That means that Donald Trump on at any given day could sell up to a million shares, but no more than that. And usually if you're a big shareholder like that, you have to uh, make announcements that you're planning on doing things so people know it's coming. Uh, and of course, you know, he's not going to do that, right? Because that's like paperwork and that gets in the way of an impulsivity. And he, of course, he's going to try and sell more than a million shares a, a day. But let's just say, you know, if you sell a million shares and it's Donald Trump selling it, that's going to send shockwaves through the market because like, oh my God, Donald Trump is selling shares in his own company. That's going to cause the price to plummet because that company without Donald Trump's likeness and his endorsement isn't worth anything. Well, it's worth a little bit, just a teeny bit, like 10 cents a share instead of like the, the 50 to $70 a share it currently is. It's worth a, a very small fraction of that. And if it was properly priced, it wouldn't be $70 a share. It probably wouldn't be 70 cents a share. Just say it. But if he tries to sell anything, he's going to plummet the price. So his net worth is going to start decreasing on paper because he can't sell it fast enough. He can't just dump, uh, you know, 60 million shares onto the market and expect nothing to happen. Ha ha, I got mine. Screw everybody else. Doesn't work that way. What's Don Donald Trump's financial situation going to look like by the end of this year? Page of Pentacles. Oh, we got money and we've got movement of money. King of Swords. You're going to have some um, legal judgments against him. And don't, don't expect, don't, um, Jack Smith is probably going to be looking into his financial moves. So even with Truth Social, uh, they are probably already monitoring the money that's coming in, trying to get an understanding of market manipulations, who's buying this stock, so on and so forth. Basically, you need to know who Donald Trump is beholden to. This could even be like, you know, the bail when he posts bail for, uh, not bail, posts his bond for the $175 million he now owes in New York. Um, they're going to be looking to see where that money came from. Underneath it all is the Page of Swords. Insider trading. The thing with, um, uh, with the, like the shares that he can sell on any given day, that's also one of the reasons why they have that limitation in there is to prevent insider trading because it could be a signal to other owners of the company that if Donald Trump is planning on selling, that the other owners are going to want to sell too because they're going to want to cash out on the top. So it could be they start watching what Trump family members do. If they own stock in Truth Social, they're going to look for insider trading. So that's going to be another complication that's going to come out of uh, the, the, sell of, the sale of Truth Social to this uh, special purchase acquisition group. He's not out of the woods yet. In the past, we got the Wheel of Fortune. And the question again was, what's going to his finance is going to be like at the end of the year? I would be really concerned. They're going to be looking at insider trading with Donald Trump and his family. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, this, I mean, this is probably something that's been going on for a while. The SEC held up the sale of that company because there were so many irregularities. There's still a bunch of lawsuits out on the company too. The it's there's a lot of shifting going on, a lot of energy shifting and rotating around in this company. Mm. 
Two of Cups, agreements and contracts. Uh, Don Jr. and others are on the board. They may allow Trump to sell early. But I think also they're going to look... I was telling you about who is Donald Trump beholden to. There's Trump and here's other people coming together. They're going to follow the money. They're going to see, you know, who are his relationships? Who's he beholden to? Because he's got all sorts of bills to pay. And if foreign money starts coming in, which, who's giving him the money? Because don't you think that any decision Donald Trump makes might be done under the lens of benefiting the person who bailed him out? Overarching energy is the four of coins, trying to hold on to your possessions, hold on to your money big time. Try not to let them take your money. I'm asking you how his money situation is going to look like at the end of the year. He's still fighting. This could also be health related too. You know, head, heart, feet. Something could happen with his head, you know, whether it's a stroke, a heart attack, affects his mobility type stuff. He's stuck. He's stuck financially and he's going to be stuck health wise. Lesson to be learned, or the over, yeah, the lesson to be learned from all this is the strength card, mastery. Bitter pills to swallow. I'm drawn to the infinity above her head. It's the infinite knowledge. This, that's why this is, it's a mastery card. This woman has wisdom and knowledge to deal with the lion here. This almost, the strength card I don't normally think of as a karma card. I normally think of this as being a karma card. Um, there's maybe he might get some news that he does not like um, regarding his finances. A bitter pill to swallow. Part of this might be, you know, the federal government starts coming to him to collect taxes. There's also people that might be suing him if they have, you know, statute limitations hasn't run out. A lot of people can come suing him because he's got money and he can afford to pay and he can't fight all these uh, court cases. Outcome, two of coins. He is going to be losing money. Here's that infinite again, right here. Juggling. If this is about juggling, trying to keep all the balls up in the air. Um, this can be health or wealth. And I think both his health and his wealth are declining uh, come the end of the year. It might even be sooner than that as they're watching this thing come through here. This is also, I think, going to be him trying to liquidate shares. You know, how do, how does he do that? How does he liquidate the shares? Because everything he sells makes the stock price drop. You know, it makes his net worth drop 10 times the amount that he sells. If it's $70 a share and he sells a million dollars a share, that share price might drop. And now that's a million shares hitting the market, which is going to dilute what's out there. But then people might say, oh, my God, you know, he's... He's selling, I better sell too, while the stock price is close to 70. So a bunch of people might sell them that might drop from 70 to 60. $10 a share in one night. Now, the other 50 million shares that Donald owns, instead of being worth 3 billion, are now worth 2.5. So him selling a million shares costs him $500 million. You know, it's that sort of, it's that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. Now, every time he sells, he costs himself tenfold as much money in uh, in losses because people will panic. They will see that. And then what will happen is, is that a bunch of short sellers will come in and they'll buy the stock uh, at that $60 price, drive it back up to $70 a share again. And then Trump starts selling another million shares. It drops it back down to $60 million, And then the shorts cover and that drops it down to $50 million. And now you can start a panic and a run on selling of that stock because you've caused it. All of a sudden, it's dropped $20 a share in a week's time or two weeks' time. And now it's a panic. It's literally a panic and a run for the door. And he can't sell enough shares 
quickly enough. And if he starts unloading shares on a daily basis, it's going to be even a bigger run to the door to the point where the stock price is going to drop down to a dollar share and Donald's still holding on to 40 million shares. That's still $40 million, but it's not $4 billion either. Things are going to get complicated for him. What foreign countries, if any, are currently propping up Donald Trump? What can you tell me about foreign money coming in with Donald Trump? I don't know if I'll be able to do countries. Maybe I'll be able to figure out um, what's going on. There's communications going on. You know, Viktor Orban coming in a couple weeks ago or a month ago, that's probably an indication of it. But he's in, he's, he's in constant communication with people. And since his phone isn't secure, I'm sure the NSA and the CIA and the FBI are well aware of who he's talking to. <laughs> yeah, and there's the world card. Communications around the world. Well, thank you, Spirit. I, I do enjoy the play school <laughs> readings I care. And money, you know? What do you think? <laughs> don't you just love it when you ask a, a question you don't know how you're going to get the answer to and they give you confirmation? Oh, did you want to know how Donald Trump is communicating to other people in the world about how to get money? Well, funny you should ask <laughs> let's give you the answer <laughs> judgment um in the past um they're looking at uh trump his decisions that he makes and how he can be i'm assuming this is just how he can be bought out and manipulated yeah we can come and help you but it's going to cost you something you know nothing's for free in this world if you're going to get money we get stuff too Um, that would indicate to me it's uh, some European countries. Um, nostalgia. Naivety. There might be a naivety component with Trump on this one. You know, the, the consequences of taking this money is, you know, there's all sorts of consequences. Not the least of which, of course, is that he won't be declaring on his taxes. So that's the same way they got Capone. And Trump loves to compare himself with Al Capone. Um, but these are gifts. And this I reason why I say Europe is that this reminds me very much of a European uh, type of uh, village. That doesn't mean it's not coming from Saudi Arabia or China or any place like that. But these, I think these are people just coming in and offering him in some ways you know to this little girl this is a huge gift that this man's giving her but he's got all sorts he's got plenty to give so there isn't a big uh, he's going to have to give back a big return on the investment overarching energy is the eight of coins yeah the seven coins underneath here is uh him evaluating his money and how to get the money and here it is. Um, Trump is very transactional. So if you're giving him something, Trump's got to give something back of value. Oh, look, the, the wedding card came out again. The Also, my going to jail card, welcoming somebody in or kicking somebody out. The lesson to be learned is the four of wands. Um, this might be the thing that causes him to want to leave the country if he can get out. Because he's sold himself to other countries at this point. And there's that concern about going to prison. So it could very well be that one of the things he's asking for is asylum. So now I'm looking at, you know, Russia or Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates. Qatar might also fall under that. Saudi Arabia, again, gets to be the... Uh, the the leader here just because i don't know how long putin's going to be around for even though that's more of a russia type thing uh, but this person has all sorts of money so whatever he's giving trump is a drop in the bucket out comes the four swords is he yeah he's he's going to be successful in getting the money from overseas his messaging is successful he's gonna he's gonna get that money and now he's a spy in the camp. He's going to be selling intelligence again. And, you know, the Biden administration is supposed to be letting him back in to uh, get intelligence briefings. I don't understand that. You know, if, if I were the Biden administration, 
I wouldn't let him within a hundred feet, a hundred miles of intelligence briefings. I would make the Republicans. I would make him be the Republican nominee before I'd share anything with him. I just would. There, there's no way I would let, I would trust him with that. So that leaves to one other question. Will, will they give him fake information? <laughs> Mind you, the Brady Bunch episode, with the play, football playbook. Marsha's boyfriend, who was the quarterback of the rival team, suddenly starts dating Marsha, and Greg decides to leave his playbook, his football playbook, lying around. But he, Peter, and Bobby have basically doctored the playbook to be the exact opposite plays. Is that what we got going on here? We're going to have a double bluff? Well, what will the uh, government do? Well, is Trump going to share? Let's talk about Trump intelligence briefings and such. High level. What's going to happen with that? Page of Swords. Is your spy in the camp? Ace of Cups, emotional immaturity, passion, relationships. It's, yeah, spy, yeah. He's, it's kind of like a, he's in a state of panic. Emotionally, he's not stable. Yeah, and it's stuff that's going outside, out of the world. I'm trying to see if I'm going to talk about water or not. You know, it's already thinking about Australia and nuclear sub <laughs> comments. But, yeah. Uh, spying in the camp and sharing those secrets outside. It's almost like a traitor type thing. In the past, you got the fool card. It would be foolish, absolutely, to give him access to this. But this might also be, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We know who this person is. We have intelligence that says that he's shared intelligence. Now, even with the Mar-a-Lago documents case, they know he shares intelligence. He doesn't keep it secret. He can't be trusted. Current situation is the devil. So what do you do when you know that this person's a mole and they, they, would, share, they would share whatever they have in order to get paid or to pay back favors. So what do you do with the double card there? Overarching energy is the star. Countering the double with the star card. Is this, again, is this the, uh, you, t you tell them that, you know, you give them both scenarios and now he doesn't know. I think what it is is that, like with this one, you you tell there's one central story, but then they give you seven different scenarios and two outcomes, and then Trump has to figure out which of these seven things is accurate of the eight. One's right and seven are wrong, and you know outcomes. Is he keeping it to himself or is he spilling the secrets? I do think they're going to monitor him. I think they're going to tell him stuff. You know, it could be that one out of eight things they tell him is true. And then they look to see what happens with those other seven. Look at all these major arcana here. Good Lord. The outcome is the death card. I don't, oh gosh. Okay, if he doesn't go to the, to the big McDonald's in the sky, I think they're going to find out that if he's if he's sharing secrets, they're going to put an end to his ability to sit in these um, these meetings. They might confront him with it. Page of Pentacles. He's going to sell them. Page of Swords, get the information, offer it for sale. Lesson to be learned. I think the death card, um, it's just going to be confirmation. You've got the, the foolish person who
whose corrupt leader of the United States can't be trusted uh, with that information, putting it for sale because he's a spy in the camp, selling in the countries outside the United States. Got a traitor in our midst. <sighs> That's going to be something I'm, I'm going to want to follow up uh, later on. I guess one last thing. Will they be held to account for that? I mean, let, let, I should close the loop on this because you're going to want to know. Will he be held accountable for being a, a page of swords and a page of coins? Messaging about taking... Um, it's not messaging. The spy in the camp is the page of swords. And then the page of coins is offering up that valuable information. It wouldn't surprise... God, it wouldn't surprise me if they try and set him up... Um, like they would try to trap a double agent. Especially if they're monitoring his calls. Will Trump be held accountable? Will he be held accountable if he's stealing and selling secrets? Eight of coins. There's the money, a little four carter, illusions and delusions, victory, nine of cups, two of wands. Mm. I'm not seeing anything that looks like That's looking like accountability or imprisonment or anything along those lines. Um, this is the eight of coins. Uh, and it could be health related. Um, this is just, this is him making his money. or This is the money, the things of value. And there's a victory card here. What is this telling me? I'm not sure if this is answering the question. This is the planning. It could be that they give him things of false value and he has traded it and they now know for sure that he's trading things of false value. Um, he can't be trusted. Again, he could be insane by that point. He can't be trusted with things. He just doesn't have the same value system. But at the same time, he's kind of untouchable because he's a former president. If I were to look at this, I would just say it's almost like they find out he's trading things of value, but they can't touch him. Former president, maybe, you know, maybe just complete Looney Tunes. And their victory is that they just stop him from doing that. Or they know, they now know how information is getting out and who it's going to. Sometimes it's not the information that gets out. Uh, Bo the Fifth Column has talked about this. It's not the information that's the most important. It's the means and methods. How you collect the information, who knows the information, and how that information gets processed. That's much more valuable in spycraft type things. So um, it could very well be that they start feeding Donald Trump some information so that they can learn about how uh, foreign countries or enemy countries uh, uh, obtain this information and how they move it around so that the United States has a better understanding of foreign nations' mechanisms when it comes to spying. Whew, that's a wild reading. Um, happy Easter, everyone. Bit of a heavy reading for Easter. Start off with Trump hawking Bibles, and now we're getting into selling of U.S. secrets. We're going to be okay. Uh, just want to just throw it out there. We're going to be okay. 
I do think that the intelligence agencies know exactly who they're dealing with. And I would assume that they're not so naive that they're just going to hand him the keys to the vault and then just you know, turn a blind eye to him. Take solace that if they do share stuff with him, they know it, it probably is going to be leaked. And so therefore they're going to share some stuff that's not as important or maybe is flat out wrong uh, so that they can trace it. And that in the end will make the U.S. stronger in the long run. Again, entertainment purposes only. What do I know? I'm just some random dude reading tarot cards on the internet. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for your likes, shares, comments, everything you do to feed the algorithm so my videos make it out to a wider audience. To folks just discovering this channel recently or for the first time, welcome to the channel. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.